And are you ready to talk about some UWF? <laughs> I'm ready. Just, you know, in the words my man, uh, Brother Midnight, just going to put my pants on, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Have you been seeing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the UWF? I've been seeing it. And I, I've been I've been blown away by it mm -hmm. every night. I mean, let me tell you this: I don't I don't know exactly what UWF stands for, mm -hmm. but it ought to be called the Ultimate Wrestling Federation. It is. I mean, this, that's really what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you got WWE, you have TNA, but then you have <laughs> UWF, which is like WWE and TNA combined, and still not even not even not even UWF. UWF is just amazing. Well, so they pale by comparison to UWF. The only way they could even begin to compete is if TNA just started showing um, uh, clips of Don West when he used to be a shut home announcer. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you, I used to watch that all the time back in the day. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Don West is a horrible announcer. But you know he's a, probably the greatest announcer of all time. Oh, yeah, certainly he's the, he's the greatest announcer in the history of uh, home shopping. That's true. But you know who the greatest wrestling announcer all, is of all time? Could that be Bruno San Martino from <laughs> UF Power Hour? <laughs> Damn right, man. Bruno San Martino, I mean, you want to talk about, like, knowledge of the sport and the way, like, he his charisma is? Oh, my the God. Thing, it's unreal. Yeah, the thing I like about it is he brings a verve and a love for the sport to every, to basically to every he calls. It's it's almost, a, it's. I never thought he could top the great work he did when he did the instant replays. Mm -hmm. At the WWF matches, mm -hmm. in, in you know, back in like the mid '80s, all of which ended. Boy, I'm glad I'm not wrestling anymore. Back to you guys. But uh, he manages to every night on UWF because you know you know what they say a lot. If, if it's televised wrestling, a lot of it comes down to how good the commentating is. Mm -hmm. That's what gets you in the match. And Bruno just reaches out, engages you, and basically doesn't let you go until the finish. True. Sure. And the other thing is too, and what and what great matches they have, right? Five star matches. One of the five, one of the, one of the uh, five star matches we're going to talk about is the uh, the um, Paul uh, the Steve Williams uh, Paul Orndorff uh, uh, yeah. lumberjack match. Five star match, and you see, you know, usually I don't give five star matches to American wrestling matches. They're going to be the Japanese or Mexican. But UWF manages to pull them off. I mean, with amazing regularity. Mm -hmm. This is. I mean, I mean, you've got, you've got you had Orndorff. I mean, when he finished with the uh, uh, Steve Williams, he, didn't he fight the intern? Oh yeah. How can we forget about the another five star match by Paul Orndorff? Paul Orndorff versus the intern. Amazing. And it's the great thing about it too. Is TN, uh, UWF balances, you know, veterans like Paul Orndorff. Uh, Steve Williams with uh, talented newcomers like Helmut, what's his name? Helmut Hassler. Helmut Hassler. Um, Death Row 02139, whatever. Uh -huh. And and then the, uh, the intern. The intern. The, uh, the grappler. The gra Actually, we're, yeah, I correct yourself. It was, it was Paul Warren the grappler. That was the five star match. Oh, that, I'm serious, and that was five star. They hit so many high spots during that thing. That was amazing. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. But, uh, that, that match, maybe the greatest match of our century. Well, the only one I think that really even gives it uh, a run for its money mm -hmm. is uh, probably the tag team match featuring uh, two of my favorites, Wet and Wild. Because mm -hmm. you know, I, I like concerns with one of the original Beach Bunnies. <laughs> really? Were their opponents now? They went against the Power Twins? The Power Twins. Seriously, this was one of those things. I mean, forget about that British Bulldogs uh, match at WrestleMania mm -hmm. this was one of the. This was probably the greatest tag team match I've ever seen. I mean, another five-star match by UWF. Yeah, exactly. I think Wild was particularly good during that. Oh, you, you mean you're talking about Sonny Blaze? Yeah, yeah. I said, I mean, no, don't wrong. The wet is good too. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, how about um, how about David uh, San Martino versus Luis Spagoli? You know what? The thing is, why? Whenever I see David San Martino wrestle, I gotta wonder why didn't the WWF put the belt on him in the mid '80s instead of that blonde guy with the mustache? I know exactly. He would have moved the company in the future. Guys like him. Yeah. Scott Putsky. Mm-hmm. Oh. The the grappler. The 
grappler. The grappler probably has to have the, one of the greatest arsenals of scientific goals. His work rate is phenomenal. Oh, the work rate is phenomenal. The work rate all around is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see Don Morocco. Yeah. And seriously, he is just putting his all into every TNA match that you see. UWF match. Okay. UW, yeah, UW, <laughs> exactly, UW, UWF. Because, uh, you know, Morocco equals work rate. Exactly. So. Work rate phenomenal. I'm like, I don't think anybody in the WWE has the work rate of Don Morocco. Or even the grappler, for that matter. I know the work rate is on Morocco. And frankly, I don't, speaking, I don't think they get the mic skills. Oh, I don't think. And you have good mic skills. Is oh, speaking good. of mic skills, they've got Captain Lou with Captain Lou's Captain yeah. Corner. And, uh, and uh, Sonny Blaze has been on that. Uh, on that. On Captain Lou's Corner? Yeah, many times. Sonny Wet Blaze? That's right. <laughs> and, although, you remember Captain Lou ate John Tolos with Ty? Oh, yeah. I really forget about that. That's another one of the greatest interview segments of all time. That my friend is television, and that's why uh, UWF is the only wrestling show mm -hmm. that doesn't make a mockery of professional wrestling. That's right. It does not. And this is, you, you, people always say, oh, yeah, wrestling's so boring. TNA, it's horrible. WWE's uh, putting me to sleep. Well, you want wrestling where they that, that does not make a mockery of professional wrestling. That's the UWF, folks. Yeah, the old wrestling federation. It's the best wrestling federation, I would say, ever, maybe. Yeah, the only thing I think that comes close is ICW in the mid-1980s. So what, what about uh, uh, New Japan wrestling? New Japan, well, you know, I have to say, you know, they ha the UWF manages to get about as many... Uh, Five-star matches. Five-star matches as New Japan, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, all right? If you're, if you're smart and you're into high spots and great wrestling album, UWF, or, you know, if you'll excuse the pun, I'll have you stiffer than a Stan Hansen Van Vader All Japan match. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amazing. And how can we forget about uh, if people want to see women in matches? How can we forget about uh, Luna Bashan? Oh yeah. You know what I like about her? What's that? She was sexy. But she never that overtake her ability as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Never. And had she uh, is a great manager and has some tremendous mic skills in uh, UWF. Yeah, I mean you just all the skills as it is, and of course you know the king of the mic skills, Colonel De Beers. Colonel De Beers. How can I forget about her mustache? Yeah, but yeah, you you know your mustaches, right? That's true. That's true. I certainly do. And Colonel De Beers has a superb mustache. And I mean, you want to talk about heel heat, though. I mean, you look you look it up in the dictionary, and there's probably a picture of Colonel De Beers under heel heat. Well, some might say cheap heat. That's true. That's true. But you know, it was an edgy angle. a la, I guess Rousseau at some point. Mm -hmm. Rousseau. What's his name? Yeah, Rousseau. Meant Rousseau. Yeah. As opposed to you know, <laughs> Rousseau, the French philosopher. But that's beside the point. UWF. I understand they've got quite an introduction on this show, too. The greatest introduction ever to a show ever in the history of a wrestling it's, show. Well, sometimes they're going to show it twice. Sometimes they have to show it twice because it's so great. you got to show it twice. Take it all in, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, production values out the roof. Out, I mean, you want a show with great pyro, great, just great. I mean, this doesn't need to be in HD because I think every episode will just have you on the floor. I think it would, but I think it would almost be too real. Exactly. Between that, Bruno's commentating, Morocco's work rate, I think mm -hmm. it would almost be too real. Exactly. Amazing. I, just, I mean, for those that don't know, UWF has aired on uh, ESPN Classic midnights, Tuesdays through Saturdays. I like to watch it after I watch the NFL Films documentaries on uh, minor league baseball. Oh. Mm, Bush League, the bright lights, folks. If you ever get a chance to see that one, it is a classic. Well, not in classic the UWF matches. Well, no, 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 but I mean, you know, apples and oranges. Yeah, we got we got to talk about more about wrestling. Yeah, uh, another match. Uh, it was a four point five star match between Don Morocco and Chris Michaels. Yeah, it was really Michaels that just knocked it down to that four point five because you know we all know Morocco equals work rate. Mm -hmm. mm. Still a great match though, and again, this is an American promotion. It's usually only your Japanese and your Mexican leagues that'll get you that many. You know. 4.5 and, and five star matches consistently, but you know, mm -hmm. UWF cranks one out every time. Amazing. Yeah, so, in conclusion of this, the Dwarf Salvation Wrestling Podcast.